how do you think we're going to find out who the bad actors are if we don't have a relationship with the people who hate them as much as we do? How's that going to work? Can somebody tell me? If you have a better idea, I want you to tell me right now. Because this is nonsense. You want to get this this world straightened out? We need to bring all the civilized people of the world together because the vast majority of the world is civilized. They don't believe that blowing innocent people at an airport up makes any sense at all. This is a group of lunatics and murderers. And if you live in a civilized world, it could be your family next. They, they will, a, a radicalized Muslim will kill a Muslim. Do you know that? And so what we want to do is create more divisions. We're going to start policing the neighborhoods of Muslims. How are we going to do that? We got any neighborhoods here in, in La Crosse, Muslim neighborhoods, we're going to start patrolling? This is just politics. It's all it is. Trying to appeal to people's base instincts and fears. So what do we do? Well, first of all, I was in Congress when the Muslim countries, Arab countries, joined with us and Europe to beat Saddam, to beat Saddam Hussein over in Kuwait. We, I was there when the ambassador from Egypt stood in the Rose Garden of the White House and said, we're all going together. It worked. By the way, give the old Bush some credit, because when we pushed Saddam out, people said, well, he didn't finish the job. You remember when people said that? He should have gone to Baghdad, should have taken the whole thing over. He actually had smart people around him that realized that you take it, you own it. We're going to run, run, run uh, Iraq? We've been trying to do it. How's it working out? So, we need to turn lemons into lemonade. And here's how we do it. We talk to those Arab Muslim countries who agree with us. Who are they? Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, the Gulf states. By the way, I saw the president made another blunder He's refusing to meet with the, with the leader of Turkey. Now, I don't like what the leader of Turkey's doing, but it was the leader of Turkey who, con, who contacted the people in Brussels, the intelligence agency, and said, you have a guy coming back who's radicalized. And by the way, the people in Belgium, they can't get out of their own way. you got so many, so many bureaucracies and so much political correctness. They knew where these, this guy was trouble. They got one of these guys committed, you know, committed a shot at the police when he was arrested. They released him. So here we were. Here's the president of the United States pushing another guy away that we need to have. We need Erdogan, the, the leader of Turkey. We don't like everything he does, but we need to. The president won't meet with him. He has time to meet with Castro at a baseball game. But this guy's critical to us. And we don't agree with them on a lot of matters, okay? We have to figure it out. So what else do we do? We get the countries in Europe. You think that the French don't understand the problem? You think the Brits don't understand the problem? You think the people in Belgium don't understand the problem? Do you think the people in Germany don't understand the Of course they understand the problem. And the leadership of this country needs to bring this world together to destroy the radical Islamists. But if we divide ourselves on the basis of ethnicity and religion, you tell me how we're going to bring them together. So I'm going to spend my time trashing you. And by the way, uh, could I, you know, could you come and help me? I'm serious. You need to think about this, folks. So the world should come together. And we need to destroy ISIS in the air and on the ground. We can't bomb them. Into, one guy says, make the sands glow. You need to beat them where they are. And we need to do it as a world, as a civilized world. Do you understand what we're dealing with here? And then over in Europe, you know, I said on the other day, Saturday, we need to change NATO, Tommy. NATO is a military organization virtually exclusively. It needs to become an intelligence 
and a policing organization to finally get those people in Europe to start working together. Because we need the intelligence. We need to know who these people are. And a lot of it is human intelligence on the ground. They need to know what's happening in the neighborhoods. They need to know the radicalism that goes on in a mosque. And I'm going to tell you, Tommy isn't going to find it out. They'll know where the, he's coming when he's a mile away. We need to cooperate, folks, because this is civilization we're talking about. And, 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 and delivering a message to stoke the fears of people is not the way to solve this. And why do I tell you this? Because I got two 16-year-old daughters. And there are a lot of people I love in this world, including these kids right here. Because you know what? When one of them is harmed, a little piece of me dies too. And all of us. Because we are all connected in this world. And we have to destroy this evil. And with good intelligence and with proper policing, maybe we can't defeat it all, but we can do a heck of a lot better. And here in this country, we have, I tell you something, see this guy standing back here with the badge on? Our counterterrorism folks, which are the FBI, the Homeland Security, the state, and the local law enforcement, these are the people that must disrupt these attacks. And they do, by the way. In my state, I don't know how many people we've prosecuted because the attacks have been disrupted, or the potential has been disrupted, and I'm sure you have it here in Wisconsin as well. And we do this the right way. Oh, the toughest one is the lone wolf and the homegrown terrorist. They're the toughest. And you know who has to report on them? You know what happened over in Brussels? It was a cab driver that smelled the fumes from the homemade bomb. And there was a neighbor who reported there's something weird going on in that apartment. Police never showed up. That's why they're now saying to the United States, could you come over here and help us? Because we have the expertise to do it, and we need to break down the bureaucracy over there so we do, they do their job and they let us know who's coming here, and we can figure this out. That's what we need to do and get on with our lives. Not huddle somewhere because we're afraid or not like somebody because of their religion. We're America. We don't shrink from the world. We have to lead the world. That's who we are. If we don't want to lead the world, the world's going to go south. I mean, that's just the way it is. And people complain, all oh, the other countries don't do everything they ought to do. Well, yeah, they don't. Do you ever notice in a family? Okay, who in here thinks they carry more of the share of the family than the other, than the siblings? Anybody? Raise your hand. Come on. Here's one right back here, right? Here's one right here, okay? You carry the load, right? Why do you carry the load, sir? Why? my parents and I love my family and uh, somebody's got to do it. Yeah, and you complain to your wife, why isn't my brother doing this? Or And I got that. But you know what? That's the way we're made. To whom much is given, much is expected. And our country is a great country to whom much has been given and much is expected. Doesn't mean we need to be saps or fools, but it means we're going to be leaders. And you know, leadership's always... Uh, what I see, then I see somebody here understood a little bit about leadership. Who the heck was it walking in here? Huh? I, did I see something about uh, Vin, the Newt Rockney and Vince Lombardi? You guys ever heard of Vince Lombardi? I, I've, I've heard about him, you know? So, folks, I just want to tell you that we can, and here with these counterterrorism task force people, they just need to have the resources, which they have, and they need the tools. And that's why it's important that this Apple encryption business you're reading about. You don't even know what this thing was, right? We need to have that resolved. And by the way, now we're finding out that they're trying to figure out a way to hack into our dams and our nuclear plants, and we will get it fixed with good leadership. All these things can be dealt with. Now, if we've got a bunch of people who know what they're doing, then it makes me a little nervous. But um, we're going to be okay. And it's going to require us to do some things. It'll be fine. And then we'll move on. And we'll get that under control. And we'll get the economy moving again. And you will believe that these kids who are sleeping on the floor here, <laughs> can't we do better than that? <laughs> 
I mean, isn't there a cot or something? This may, look at him under here. I may might be playing Cowboys and Indians or something, but um, that they're going to have a good future because this is what it's all about, girls. It's all about you having a life better than your mommy and daddy. That's what we all want for you. Right, folks? Okay. How about some questions? How about some questions? You talk about anything you want, and uh, if I don't like the question, Tommy will answer it. Yes, sir. Future President Kasich, I have a question. I've been a Republican for 48 years. Well, what were you before that? Uh, nothing. <laughs> a Packer nothing. fan. I yeah. got you. No, no, no. <laughs> Yes. I must confess a little disappointment in the Republican Party over the last four or five elections. And so my question is, does the leadership of the Republican Party understand that the demographic of this country is changing? And what are we doing to attract more of the other groups into the Republican Party? Well, first of all, I would tell you that, you know, what good does it do to win a primary in a narrow way and get your brains beat out in the general if you want to elect the president, okay? I'm the only one who pulls ahead of Hillary Clinton. I have her by 11 points in the last poll. Uh, and, you know, I don't know what these people are doing. They play politics and all that. But the fact is, is that, you know, my message, who do you want to talk about? You want to talk about Hispanics? You know, my message is finish the wall. That's reasonable have a guest worker program, and if you came here illegally and you've not committed a crime since you've been here, you're going to pay a fine, some back taxes, and, uh, and you get a path to legalization. You're not going to become a citizen because we're not going to let you do that. That's not an anti-message to Hispanics. How about what I've just said about, about Muslims? Huh? Is that, I mean, am I, okay, African Americans. I, I was able to get 26 percent. You never got 26 percent of the African American vote. Oh, you would not tell it. You... <laughs> Zach, coffee. Some. Can I get some tea, please? I don't. I don't believe you, Tommy. I'm gonna have to recheck that. Well, that's pretty good, but that's because he reached out. That's what he is. That's why I probably didn't win. Was the last election he ran for? He wasn't narrow enough. So you lose. The, you win the primary, lose the war. So you know the fact of the matter is the reason why I do well, sir, is. First of all, I don't like I, 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 but we're, what I'm stuck in the eyes, okay? Team is what matters. There is a team that surrounds me that is good. We reach out. You know, we're helping in our state the mentally ill, the drug addicted, the working poor, the minority community, the developmentally disabled. We want everyone to rise. We did criminal justice reform, so we're not locking nonviolent felons up next to a murderer. You know, we, we're involved in many different things because that's what you do as a public official. I'm not out here to appeal to any, you know, I'm going to get your vote, so I'll tell you what you want to hear. I won't do that, ma'am. Maybe for you, though. You look <laughs> like it might be good. But, you know, the fact is, is that do your job. I landed at the airport today. And I walked into the, in the little office, and there were three ladies standing in there. You know what they said? You're our man. We're proud of you. Okay, whether I win or lose, that's a good thing to hear. So, and the demographics are changing, but we shouldn't change just because the demographics are changing. We should be changing because everybody should have a chance to rise in America. Well, are we going to hold some down and build others up? Who are we going to take orders from? Some rich guy over here going to tell me what to do? Forget about it. So, sir, the other problem we have with the party is the party is fundamentally against as opposed to for things. And you don't do well in an election when you don't know what you're for. You've got to know what you're for. And secondly, don't make promises to people. You know, in 2014, and I'm going to give you another little government lesson here. Republicans ran around saying that they were going to repeal Obamacare in 2014, okay? Can somebody explain to me why that would have been, like, the most outrageous promise that any? Let's see if you – let's see how smart you are, sir. 
because Barack Obama would never sign that law. Well, isn't that unbelievable? Give that man a 